In this video, we explain the thermodynamics of ion transport. All right, what we're trying to do here is uh, internalize a substance from the outside uh, to the inside uh, of a cell membrane or a general membrane. Okay, so suppose that this is, would be a sodium ion. Again, the goal is to try to compute whether the uh, transfer of that ion from the outside of the membrane to the inside of the membrane is spontaneous or not. In the end, we're going to be calculating this uh, with the uh, delta G, the change in Gibbs energy for the transport, which again, we're going to consider that it's always from the outside to the inside. If you're interested in the transport from the inside to the outside, then you can proceed this way and then change the sign at the end because the Gibbs energy is a state function. All right, the change in Gibbs energy uh, in this transport is simply going to be the difference in the chemical potential of the species that you're trying to transport uh, uh, from the outside to the inside. Okay, the final state is the inside, so that would be the chemical potential inside minus uh, the initial state, which is the chemical potential outside. Now, we have a lot of experience uh, writing chemical potentials for uh, a variety of species, and the way that we can do this is simply by uh, using the chemical potential of the reference plus RT natural log of the activity inside. This is the chemical potential inside uh, the cell minus the chemical potential at the start of the transport process, which will be uh, the chemical potential at, uh, reference, and then RT natural log of the activity outside. Okay. Of course, these two terms are going to cancel each other. And then we have that uh, this gives energy for the transfer uh, from the outside to the inside of that membrane is simply equal to RT natural log of the activity inside minus RT natural log of the activity outside. Okay, which we can consolidate, consolidate by taking common factor of our team and then making uh, the difference of these two natural logs uh, as the uh, natural log of the ratio. All right, so that is all going to turn into the following. There will be the activity inside over the activity outside. Now we have also learned how to map those activities into, uh, for example, molar concentrations. And that's something that we'll have to do in this case because the species, the species are all going to be solutes uh, in, a, in, in a dilute solution. So these terms are just going to be replaced by the uh, molar concentration div divided over the reference concentrations of that species outside and inside. All right, so uh, you can clearly see how this uh, equation is going to bear out an expectation. So suppose that you have here that the concentration outside is 0.1 molar and the concentration inside is about 10 times less. Clearly, there is a concentration gradient that is favoring the transfer of that uh, ion from the outside into the inside. Okay, how is that borne out by this expression? Well, the concentration inside is less than the concentration outside. And what that's going to mean is that you're taking the natural log of a number less than one, and that happens to be a negative number. Uh, that means that delta U will be negative under constant pressure and temperature, and that means that the process is spontaneous, which is exactly what you, uh, what you expect to find. Now, uh, something that we have to add to uh, uh, this investi investigation of uh, the transfer of ions is the fact that uh, many membranes can have a difference uh, in the number of positive and negative, ch negative charges outside and inside. Okay, when you actually are looking at um, uh, an actual cell, uh, you not only have sodium ions inside and outside, uh, you're also going to have potassium ions inside and outside, and you might have negative ions like chloride and so forth. All right, so depending on the concentration of all of these species, it might be quite possible that uh, you have an excess of positive charge uh, outside uh, compared to inside or the other, other, other way around, right? It's possible that you might have more positive charges inside compared to what you have outside. Now, this should affect the transport uh, of an ion because an ion is a positive species, right? So for this sodium ion, what happens outside is that, well, there's an excess of positive charge. Again, that means that that ion is being repelled uh, to a larger extent than if the ion was inside, okay? So, so that term, that electrostatic term that has to do with those charges should also favor the transport of this ion uh, from the outside into the inside, okay? Now the question is how do we quantify that electrostatic term that has to do with the different repulsions that an ion might experience outside 
than inside the membrane. Well, that is done with a term uh, that depends on something that we call the transmembrane potential. Okay, it's delta phi, and again, this receives the name of as the transmembrane potential. And this is just an indication of a potential. This is just an indication of, again, uh, these uh, uh, excess of positive charges or negative charges inside and outside. Okay, so if this number happens to be uh, uh, positive, then what that would mean is that the inside of the cell is more positive than the outside of the cell. And this not, if this number is negative, what that would mean is that uh, you actually have the same situation that you have right here, is the outside of the cell that is more positive than the inside of the cell. Usually this delta phi is given in volts or millivolts as a voltage, okay? And uh, uh, that expression enters this uh, delta G uh, for the transfer of ions as a fairly simple term, which is this C, F, and then delta phi. All right, this low KC is just the charge of the ion. Right, so for a sodium plus ion, that will be plus one. For a chloride minus ion, that will be minus one. Okay, uh, that is just Faraday's constant, which is a number that will be provided to you uh, in a test or in an exam. Okay, and that number is 9.648, 10 to the four coulombs per mole. And that is your transmembrane trans potential, which again uh, depends on the electrostatics that we just discussed. Okay, and the units of these are going to be volts. Okay, so as it turns out, uh, the product of a coulomb times a volt is equal to joules. So the units that you get out of here are going to be joules per mole, which are the same units as what you have right here. And that gives you uh, uh, the molar change in Gibbs energy as you transferred ions from the outside to the inside of the membrane. All right, so in problems, we will learn how to operate with this. But there's two major scenarios that may uh, that might em emerge. Okay, one of them is what we actually have right here. Okay, so both uh, uh, the concentration and the electrostatic term are in favor of the transfer of the sodium ion from the outside into the inside. Okay, uh, then what that's going to mean is that all of this, this delta G will be negative, and then the transfer is spontaneous. Okay, so you can actually move the sodium ion from the outside into the inside without doing any work. The only thing that you need is a mechanism. Uh, uh, for the internalization of that ion. And this mechanism might involve a protein or a pore or something like that. The second scenario is that, uh, well, it might be a different system in which the transport gives you a positive delta G. And what that means is that that process will not be spontaneous. However, uh, you can make it be spontaneous, you can make it happen if you couple the transport to a process that is exergonic, a process that is going to generate uh, uh, the ability to do work. Okay, for example, the hydrolysis of ATP. Under biological standard state conditions, we know that the hydrolysis of ATP has a delta G of about minus 31 kilojoules per mole. Right, so uh, if you couple this uh, uh, transport that has a positive delta G to that minus 31 kilojoules per mole at the biological standard state, and the overall term, this plus the hydrolysis of ATP, happens to be a negative, uh, that ha happens to have a negative delta G, then that process can uh, take place, right? You can facilitate the transport, uh, uh, the non-spontaneous transport of an ion from the outside to the inside again by coupling it to an exergonic process like the hydrolysis of ATP. And actually, that's the way that uh, uh, the sodium potassium pump works, right? So you pump, pump potassium uh, sodium ions uh, from the inside to the outside, potassium ions from the outside to the inside, but that requires uh, one uh, one ATP molecule. Uh, each one that you transport those three and two sodium and potassium ions, respectively. Right, so in other courses like biochemistry, you have studied uh, th those mechanisms for uh, ion pumps, uh, uh, but the thermodynamics are actually uh, clearly detailed by this uh, very simple expression, which again allows you to uh, compute whether that transport is spontaneous or non spontaneous, and whether, you, uh, whether it can occur naturally or whether you have to couple that to uh, hydrolysis of ATP.